prior to going live and coming online, we were laughing and having a good time talking about, you know, we got up this morning. Yeah. And, 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 and Bishop brought to our attention that the only reason that we got up is because he got up. That's good, man. Wow. See, see, so, you know, people are, are, are running around and they got their children going through all of these traditional motions and all of this stuff that ain't got nothing to do with him getting up. And so what we're going to talk about today is we're going to tie it into what our last Easter sermon was. We done been through the Easter Bunny and we done gave the history and we done done all of that. We, we know what Easter is about. There is no Easter. There ain't no Easter. That's what it's about. It's about there is no Easter. So we're going to stop telling that lie. It, it's, a, it's not about Easter. It's about the resurrection. It's about a real man. Come on now. God man, Come on. divine man, yes. dying Come on. on the cross to forgive us of our sins Thank you, Lord. and getting up Amen. with all power, Come on now. with all glory, Amen. with all authority. Amen. So what we're going to talk about today and we're going to focus on, you, you're not going to hear me talk about the E word. It's not about the E word. It's about the resurrection. Come on. So we're going to talk about the power Come on now. of the resurrection. Yeah. You better say that. And what happens when we are resurrected in him. All right. mm -hmm. Whatever is dead mm -hmm. in us well. can be resurrected mm -hmm. in him. Right. His death proved that his power is beyond death. Well. He has the power over death. Just as he has the power over life. Amen. We talked about all of that traditional stuff. We talked about it. We talked about it. We talked about it. We talked about it until folks are desensitized to the resurrection. Come on now. They want to go get a piece of chocolate and they want to die some eggs. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to do. Because that's all they know. And if that's where you are, I'm okay with you being where you are. But we're trying to teach and grow. That's the whole purpose for ministry is to teach and to grow, to be better. So we're going to focus on the power of the resurrection. Come on now. Resurrection means the state of one risen from the dead. Well. The state of one risen from the dead. Well. In order for you, me, or anybody else to be resurrected, they got to first be dead. dead. All right. We've heard of the instances of people coming back to life. You know, they die, their heart stop. And then they get to doing the CPR and shock them and they shock them back to life. Well, they didn't have to shock our Savior back to life. All right. You see, even in the shocking of an individual coming back to life, that ain't the resurrection. Come on now. We're talking about the power of the resurrection. See, because if somebody's shocking you, somebody had to keep them alive to shock you. Uh -huh. So there's somebody keeping somebody alive to keep you alive, well, to keep me alive. Yes. Watch this. Resurrection means the state of one being risen from the dead, the rising from the dead of a human being who still return, retains his personhood. Well, you still who you are when you come back from the dead. You, you still who you are. Watch this. Though the body may or may not be changed. Well. If you come back to life, Lazarus came back to life. Was he still Lazarus? Mm -hmm. yeah. Jarius' daughter that came back to life. Was he still Jarius' daughter? Yeah. He still recognized his daughter. The sister still recognized who Lazarus was. So they really still retained their personhood and their individuality, right? Mm -hmm. Resurrection simply means that you have been dead, out of here, gone, ghost. It means that both literally and figuratively. Well, Say, for instance, there's something dead in you that needs to be resurrected. All right. God has the power to bring that thing back to life in you. Mm -hmm. Just like he proved by his death on the cross that he had power over death. See, everybody was thinking that Jesus was alive. Mm -hmm. 
See, they wanted to, they wanted to try to catch him up in something. Jesus told them, you see, he's gonna turn in three days. He's gonna be back in three days. He would, he would so they they was hoping against all hope that he was lying. And they was concocting stories to get ready in case he did. So we're going to say that somebody came and stole his body at night. We, they did not want the truth to be told because they knew. They had to know. They knew, but they didn't want to know. That's the condition of many of us. We know, but we don't want to know sometimes. Watch this. God's power, for those of us who say that we are believers, is awesome and it's majestic. But it's got to be activated in us. Well, Listen. Jesus was crucified how many times? One. One time. That's all it took. That's all it took. It only took one time. We don't have to crucify him to open shame again by running around here talking about what he need to do. He already done it. All right. He, he's already done what he needed to do. I want somebody to get this. Come on. He's already done what he needed to do. On. Now it's on us to do what we need to do. Right. To receive what he's already done right. on our behalf. Yeah. See, when he got up, we got up with him. Right. Yeah. And if you're still in a condition, that means you ain't got up yet. <laughs> yeah. huh? That means that you ain't got up yet. You ain't resurrected it yet. Even though we got up this morning and we were in the resurrection because we are a part of the family of believers and we are a part of Christ and we got up and got up in him, somebody still got something inside of him that's dead that needs to be resurrected, amen? Watch this. Everything that we are taught and everything that we understand about God and what he has done for us can be summed up in the resurrection. Everything that he did on the cross, he did for you. And for me. Mm -hmm. But he didn't just do it for you and for me. He did it for believers, unbelievers, saved, unsaved. He did it so that everybody, all of his creation, would have an opportunity. Yeah. If they receive. He, when he defeated, when he defeated death and sin, he defeated the power of Satan over all of us. Yeah. When, it, when it got up. See, before he got up, they could say anything they wanted to say. They could do anything that they wanted to do. But after he got up, they couldn't say what they were saying no more. Uh -huh. See, when we are in a dead condition, folk can say what they want to say about us as long as we're in that dead condition. But when we resurrect in him, they can't say it no more. Or they can say it, but it don't have no power. Amen. Watch this, watch this. All of the divine regeneration, all of the redemption, all of the renewal, all of the reconciliation, all of the reward. All of the restoration, all of the power that he had, he gave to us yeah. when he got up. Mm -hmm. When he got up, we got up with him. Because yeah. if we reckon ourselves alive, then we got to reckon ourselves dead with him too. Mm -hmm. See, when he got up, we got up. Mm -hmm. The portion of him that's in us is supposed to be up. It's supposed to be resurrected. So on this Resurrection Sunday, we're going to try to bring some things back alive. Amen? Yeah. Ephesians. First chapter 19 from the 21st says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power mm -hmm. toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worketh in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. Let's talk about power for a minute. Men have a certain amount of strength. Well, Men have a certain amount of power that they attain of themselves. That's not the type of power we're talking about. We're talking about the power to open blinded eyes. We're talking about the power to grow back limbs. We're talking about the power to unstop ears. We're talking about the power to save your very soul. That's power. That's that dunamis power that we're talking about. That's that miraculous power that we're talking about. That's that strength that we don't understand. You know, it's like that energy. This is a Greek word. It's like the operation of that power in practice. Yeah. When he got up, he was showing his power. Yeah. When he spoke the world into existence, he was showing his power. Yeah. When you said, I love you, Lord, he was showing you his power. Yeah. When he gave you another chance, he was showing his power. When you got up this morning, he was showing you his power. Yeah. That energy. That operation, that 
power on display, that dunamis, that miraculous power. We're going to look at that isis, that forcefulness of that power that he has, the ability to be God, the ability to do everything that the word says that he can do and more, and everything that we can comprehend and the things that are incomprehensible to us, he can still do them through his power. Amen? Amen. We're talking about that karatos. We're talking about that dominion. We're talking about that might. We're talking about that being able to rule and to rule with authority. Say that. Say authority. authority. See, that's our problem. We don't recognize our authority. Yeah. See, we walk around here and we've got power in us that we don't use. Yeah. We don't recognize the power that's in us because we don't use it. We're not accustomed to using it. And then when we see the power in action that's coming through us, we get a little confused. Well, who did that? Jesus said unto her, 
I am the resurrection. Say that with me. I am the resurrection. Listen, you are the resurrection. Because Jesus is in you. So if Jesus is in you, you are the resurrection. You are the promise of the resurrection. You are the proof of the resurrection. Listen, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Hold on now. Who he talking to? He talking to folk that might be dead. And he can't be talking to folk that might be dead because folk that might be dead don't know who he is. That's well. So he talking to folk that might be living and might be dead. He talking to folk that might be living and might be spiritually dead. Watch this. Listen to it. Listen to the words again. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me. Okay, so you got to believe in him first. That's right. If you did, I don't know what you believe in. I know what you could have believed in. So he, he can't be talking to dead folk. Because Jesus is talking to a woman about somebody. Watch it. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, even if he were dead, yet he shall live. Well, how are you going to live? Because of the power of the resurrection. Well. Thank God Almighty. First Thessalonians says, for if we believe that Jesus died, some folks don't believe he died. Some folks still run around here talking about this is a story that was concocted to manipulate weak minds. Well, That's what some folks say. That's how foolish the enemy is. He's so foolish, but you got some folk that believe that foolishly. First Thessalonians 4 and 14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Listen, he ain't going to forget about nobody. He's going to resurrect all of those in him. See, God of mine, resurrection means coming back to life. Well, If there is a dead place in you, the power of Jesus can resurrect that dead place in you. Right. If you are dead, literally out of here, gone, the power of Jesus Christ Flowing through a anointed vessel can raise you from the dead. Jesus was the perfect example. Lazarus has been dead four days. Four days. What happens when you're dead one day? The gases start building up in your body. You start bloating. Flies start looking for you. You start to go into that turn, and especially if they ain't dipped you in no formaldehyde or dipped you in no salt or put nothing in you to preserve you. Then on the second day, you start to get rancid. Yes, on the third day, fluids start to leak. Mm -hmm. On the fourth day, you couldn't write. Yes, sir. <laughs> you write now. All right. The power. Well, say that. The power of Jesus mm -hmm. negated the four days of state. Mm -hmm. Negated the four days of the, He was good and dead. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about graveyard dead. In the tomb. For me, but the power. That resurrection power. Well, Listen, and he hadn't even died yet. Well. <laughs> he hadn't even died yet. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. But I'm trying to get you to understand he had already died before he died. Well. Huh? Because he knew what was going to happen. He said, I'll go, Lord. Daddy, I'll go. Daddy, listen, you got to have a lamb. Daddy, I'll go. I'll be the sacrificial lamb. Daddy, I, I, Daddy I'll go. 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 Daddy, how many times have we said, Father, I'll go. Father, I'll go. Father, I'll go. Father, I'll go. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. John, 64. John, you are like this one. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone would see the Son and believe on him, may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up in the last day. Well, mm -hmm. uh, uh, listen, I just want you to believe. Come on. Listen, folks say, I don't care what you believe. I'm not going to tell you that. I do care what you believe. Mm -hmm. I want you to believe that you have power in you, that you have dunamis power running through you, that you have authority running through you, that you have the power. To, listen, you, why ain't you raising nobody from the dead? It's got to be according to your faith. According to you, because you got the power in you. Tap, right. You got to tap into it. That's See, right. we get offended at some people who have tapped into God's power. Mm -hmm. You have the same ability to tap into God's power. Mm -hmm. 
The same resurrection power that's in somebody else is in you too. Watch this. Watch this now. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Wait a minute. Where the spirit dwell? In you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we're going to talk about mortal bodies. By his spirit that dwells in you. Listen, hold on now. I don't want to go too fast because I don't want nobody to miss this one. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that's God's spirit because God raised Jesus. Yeah. Right? He that raised up Christ from the dead, he that raised up Christ, which is God, shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Your natural body shall be quickened by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So the natural God, the, the spiritual God in you can fix everything in your natural body. Mm -hmm. Anything that's broken by his power can be fixed by that power that's in you. Your mortal body is your natural body. Well. God raised Jesus from the dead. That spirit of God that is in us can raise our bodies, can fix anything that's in our natural bodies is broke. You ain't got to walk around here with glaucoma, glaucoma, diabetes, high BTs, high blood pressure. You ain't got to walk around here with because the Spirit of God has addressed it already. You got to tap into the formula to fix it. Yeah. Watch this, watch this. I'm gonna read it one more time. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Yes. First Corinthians 6 and 14 says, and God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Well, listen, Jesus is our Lord. First Corinthians said, God raised Jesus. Whew, God of mine. God raised Jesus, but Jesus was God. Listen, we get so caught up in the who, what, when, where, why. This is what I need you to know. The triune. The Godhead. Yes. The three in one. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. It was one. Mm -hmm. They created one. And it, it, each one of them operated in a different office, but with the same authority and power. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? Yes. The same authority and power to do different things according to their office, but with the same power. Mm -hmm. Because they all were one. God listen, I don't, listen, I want to rephrase this. If you pray to Jesus, I'm okay with it. If you pray to God, I'm okay with it. If you pray to the Holy Spirit, I'm okay with it. Well, if you don't pray, I'm not okay with it. See, regardless of who you pray to, as long as you understand the Godhead, any one of the three entities that you pray to is fine. You're going to have some recourse. You're going to have some, some results from that. Amen? Amen? Watch this. Watch this. Romans 6 and 4 says, Therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death. Got to die. Yeah. Got to die. Yeah. Got to reckon ourselves dead. Something in us. Got to, that old nature. Well, that old man. Well, got to die so yeah. that he can be resurrected into a new creature. Mm -hmm. Into a new man. So that we can walk into our newness. Listen. We don't think. Okay. I'm going to get there. I hear you, Lord. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Amen. We can't walk into the newness of life until we are resurrected into a new man. All right. Huh? Yes. All right. Huh? That's, it's not possible. Or else we're still walking in the old man. And the old man is not the new man. See, woo, if you're who you were, you're not who you can be. Amen. <laughs> if you're who you are, you're not who you can be. That's right. People like to look at who you were, well. but not who you are. Mm -hmm. So they like to keep their eye and their memories on the old man. You know what pictures do? Remind you of who you were. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bring back memories of where you were in a place. You can see a picture and you can taste the cognac on your lips. You can see a picture and you can smell the smoke in the air because pictures do something to the mind that is burnt into the image and the recesses of your mind. Well, I want you to picture this. I want you to picture Jesus being beaten. I want you to picture them smacking him in his face. 
I want you to picture them pressing that crown down on his head, piercing him in his side, no pulling way. out his beard. I no. want you to picture them beating the skin off his back. The, the, the words that his visage was so marked, he was unrecognizable as a man. He did that for us and did not utter a mumbling word for us on our behalf. That's power. That's authority. He did that for us. But if you look at Jesus, the old man, you look at Jesus, the new man, because Jesus as the old man was the Jesus who was crucified. Jesus as the new man was the Jesus who was resurrected. But listen, you're talking about Jesus as the old man. I'm talking about in your thoughts. See, because some people, like we alluded to earlier, like to keep Jesus as a baby. Some people like to keep Jesus on the cross. They don't like to remember that Jesus not only died on the cross, but he got up off the cross. And he got up out the grave. See, some people like to keep Jesus in an old man place. And the newness of Jesus is that he's been resurrected. Amen. First Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Well, Listen, everything that we hope and everything that's in us is based on him getting up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Everything that we understand, know, and do is based on him getting up. All right. Watch this. Somewhere this morning, somebody didn't, didn't get up. Somewhere this morning, somebody didn't get up. If Jesus so desired for an individual to be a testimony, he could send a prophet, an anointed apostle, an evangelist, or he could send whoever he want to and get them up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there's enough power. I read a story, I'm going to deviate for a second, of a woman whose son had died in an accident in a football game. And she would not leave the emergency room. Mm -hmm. The doctor said, your son is dead. Your son is dead. Your son is dead. She said, stop saying that. My son is alive. My son is living. The doctors kept saying he don't have no pulse. She kept saying, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. She would not relent. She would not refuse because she was so adamant. She got the nurses and the doctors to start praying on behalf of her son. And when they was getting ready to roll him to the morgue, the way when my son said, well, wait a minute now. I, I think there, there, there might be a pause. Yeah. I think there might be a pause. She started to pray hard. She started to pray hard. His eyes opened up. He started batting his eyes. Wait a minute now. This is the power Ooh. of prayer. Yeah. Yeah. But the prayer power came from the power that was in her to believe that she had the power to raise somebody from the dead through the power that was in her. It wasn't her. It was her love. For Jesus and her love for her son and her love for the power that she knew was running through her. That she said, my son yeah. is not dead. Well, my son is not dead. That power, that power that's in her that was flowing through her flows through us. Well, According to your faith, yes. you can have and do whatever the word said that you can do and have according to your faith. And I hope against all hope that you believe that. But that's where it starts at. It starts with your believing. See, you say you believe with your lips. You say that you believe with your lips, but your actions never catch up to what your lips say. You see, we can do some lip service, and we can say stuff, that, and our lips have us in a place where our heart and mind is far from. When you believe, that you have power in you, you understand your authority, and you understand where your authority comes from, and you don't abuse it, amen? So when you believe it, when you believe it, when you believe it, when you are born again, you believe that you have power, but the resurrection power just doesn't automatically start happening well, in your life. You have to choose to believe it. When you make the choice to believe it, you are activating the resurrection power. Until you believe that Jesus died on the cross, went down into hell, handled his business, got up, walked around, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 people saw him. He told folk what they needed to do. Go 
tell people that he was alive. He had conversation with until you believe that the resurrection power is not operating in you. Because believing that means that you believe that he had the power to do it. Amen? Well, well. Believing is what activates the resurrection power of God in your life. We who call ourselves believers and we who call ourselves Christians have to understand that when we came to the Lord, sure. we came to him because we believed that he was able to save us from our sins. Amen. Well, the reason that we believe that he was able to save us from our sins might have been because of something that we heard or something that we taught, but it started with our belief. And yeah. our belief is what activated that resurrection power. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when, when you think about what Jesus accomplished on the cross. When you think about the deliverance that, that, that it brings to us. When, when you think about the, the restoration that, that the resurrection brings to us. When, when you think about the forgiveness of our sins that the resurrection brought to us. That in itself is power. God made everything in the universe right again after it was made wrong by Adam and his treachery with his wife in the garden being beguiled by the enemy. Well, yeah. God's death, burial, and resurrection started the order back over to give us a second chance. And in order for us to access these benefits that Christ died for us to have, such as healing and abundance and peace and joy and everything good, we got to put our belief on. Our belief is different than putting our mouth on it. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, because everything you say, you don't believe. You say some stuff because it sounds good, but you don't necessarily believe it. Watch this. Every yoke that was in your life and in my life is destroyed and was destroyed when Jesus got up. Well, The resurrection power has yoke-breaking ability, bondage-breaking ability, power to release in every portion of our life, dunamis, dynamite, energy, storaco, and it's just power in our lives. If we'll use the authority that we have to operate in it. Amen. Amen. We got to speak it. When you believe in the resurrection power that is residing in you, your words line up with your lips and your lips line up with your words. They don't go contrary. Now sometimes your lips go straight. Sometimes your lips go sideways. That's right. And how I know your lips go sideways sometimes? Because sometimes my lips go sideways. And my lips go sideways <laughs> tilted. Your lips might go sideways tilted too. Right. But I know that from time to time, my lips are run ahead of my thoughts. Amen. Yeah. So I ain't no need in you watching wherever you're watching from to think that your mouth don't get you in trouble sometimes too. in trouble. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I never turn my back on you. Lord, before the cop crowed three times, you're going to be done denying me so many times. Y'all know the story. Mm -hmm. Our lips say one thing. Mm -hmm. Our lips say one thing and our heart is saying another. Our heart is saying mm -hmm. one thing and our lips mm -hmm. are saying another. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to speak faith-filled words mm -hmm. to release blessings, to release power. The same power that Jesus used to speak, that God used to speak the world into existence is in us. I'm going to show you something here in a minute. That same power dwells in us, right? Jesus made mortal flesh yes. come alive well. by speaking and then breathing into it. See, he spoke these things into existence. He fashioned man from the dust of the ground. Then he breathed into man. And the word said man became a living soul. Watch this. Notice it doesn't say that he glorified the flesh. He, the flesh was, was, was what housed the soul. Yeah. The flesh was the, the temple, the dwelling place of the most high. See, because it had to have, the, the spirit of God had to have somewhere to, be, to live. The resurrection power coming from God in his word that was placed in our spirit quickens our mortal flesh. It quickens means it's supposed to make it do right. Make it, make it do right when it won't do wrong. Right. Make it act right. Make it come in agreement with what the word of God say. Make it live in a state that it's not used to living in. See, because being alive, not the same thing as living. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
Mm. See, there's a lot of people that's alive that's not living. There's some folk that's sitting in church that's zombies. Dead man, dead woman walking. Yeah. Because their spirit man is dead. Yeah. Spirit man hasn't been quickened. Yeah. Hasn't been awakened. Yeah. Hasn't come back to life. Yeah. Hasn't been resurrected yeah. yet. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Every time you speak the name of Jesus or plead the blood over Jesus or a situation, Satan is reminded of his defeat. Amen. He's reminded of what happened that day. On the cross of Calvary. Then, after you believe it and after you speak it, then you act on it. Amen? Amen. Watch right. this. Watch this. Make no mistake. I want you to understand that Satan's defeat is something that he is reminded of every time we get up in the morning. <laughs> he didn't get us, he didn't take us out. That trap that he set for us, we didn't fall victim to that snap, to that trap. You see, that, that, that incident that he had that was meant to take us out of here didn't take us out of here. Amen. He's reminded every day that we get up of his defeat. Watch this. When Satan was defeated on Calvary that day, he came up with a plan to from here on out try to lure us back to his, his fold. He wants to bring a curse back upon us. Well, he wants to have us trespassing in our sins again. He wants us wallowing in old memories. He wants us wallowing in the old man. He wants to keep us in a place from the new. He doesn't want us to walk in newness. He doesn't want us to walk in forgiveness. He doesn't want us to walk in the resurrection power that we have. Amen. Amen. Ephesians says it like this. But God is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sin, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. I want somebody to get that. Watch this. But God is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, you can be alive and sin and be dead in your sin. I, I'm telling you, when I was talking about zombies and dead folks sitting beside you, you can be dead in your sins. Watch this. He gave, but, but he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. Well, it's only by God's grace and his power and his mercy that any of us are here today. Anyway, the resurrection power that happened over 2,000 years ago happened this morning. <laughs> when you got up, good God Almighty. See, people have gotten away from understanding that you can be resurrected in him. And that whatever is in you that is broken or needs to be fixed was crucified with him on the cross. The word says all manner of sickness and disease he took upon his body. He took the diabetes and the cancer and the AIDS and the unspeakable diseases and the high blood pressure and the glaucoma and the, and the alcoholism and the drug addictions and the homosexuality and the lesbianism. He took all of that on and the epilepsy and the palsy and the leprosy and all. He took all of that on his body. And every time they hit him with a strike, we were healed by one of them. One of those things heals something in us. By his stripes, those stripes that he took across his back healed something in us. Which one of them strikes heals something in you? Oh, Which one of them strikes is going to resurrect something in you? Yes. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Yeah. The resurrection power of Jesus operates in our spiritual life. And if we don't understand the resurrection, we don't understand being born again. Well. We would still be in darkness and we would still be in sin if we did not understand and give ourselves to Christ. Watch this. When we received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of our lives, when, he, when we invited him into our hearts, he began the resurrection process. See, because the resurrection process happened, <laughs> it didn't happen overnight. Amen. See, there were some things that had to happen while he was being resurrected. Uh -huh. There was some work being done. Uh -huh. he was, there, was some, there was some things that was going on. He had to go and handle some business in, in, in the process of being resurrected. Amen. So the, he, he died on this day. Mm -hmm. He didn't get back up that day, did he? Uh, did he get back up the next day? No. Did he get back up the next day? Mm -hmm. He 
you get back up after how many days? Three, three days. Three days. Yeah. So in them three days after they killed him, something had to be processed. Uh -huh. Something had to take place. He had to go and handle some business. So I'm saying to you, if you're trying to seek God from some resurrection, from something that's dead in you, it ain't going to happen overnight. It's a process. Yeah. There's some things that's got to be taken care of in you before you can become resurrected and walk in the resurrection power. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. Watch this. Watch this. You got to be reborn. And he's got to deal with some old stuff and some old minds and some old things in order to usher you into the newness. Watch this. Watch this. Many forget that Adam was in his fallen state. And Adam died spiritually and began to die spiritually the minute that he sinned. The minute that he sinned. The, and when he didn't follow the directions, spiritually he started dying because he wasn't designed to die. He was designed to live eternally and forever in the presence of our Lord. So he started dying physically. That must mean that we who are believers, have to be resurrected in our spirit first. After we invited the Lord into our heart to become our Lord and Savior, he got to go into us and start doing some spiritual work and fixing some stuff in our spirit before we can be resurrected in our full new man. Watch this. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Because if we, if we said it and we got it that day, we don't know how to use it. We, we don't know how to use it. Watch this. When we are spiritually reborn, mm -hmm. the process of resurrection is beginning. Watch this. God puts a new spirit within us. That's what it says in Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. When the breath of new life is breathed on us, mm -hmm. something happens. Mm -hmm. When God created man and breathed his spirit into us, something happens. The same power that breathed into us is the same power that can breathe on us and cause us to be removed from every situation that hinders our growth. Well, he don't come down here and breathe into us like he did when he created man anymore. He can breathe on us. Well, how does he breathe on us? You breathe in nature. <laughs> that's how he breathes on us. He breathes on us because the portion of his breath that's in us is still breathing. So if you still breathing, not only did he breathe in you, he has breathed on you. Watch this, watch this. After God blew into Adam that he created from the dust of the ground, Jesus then turned around before he was crucified. And after he was crucified and and all of these things that transpired, he blew on his disciples. He gave them the presence of God. He gave them the presence of God to enter into their souls through the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Well, watch this. Jesus blowing was a sign that he was alive. Yeah. He gives us the breath of life resulting in the impartation of the character and nature of God back into our lives. Because it might have been dead. It might not have been activated. It might have just been sitting there. Some folks sitting in church like this right now. What in the world is he talking about? Or well, if you're a dead man, you don't hear nothing but the Charlie Brown. Womp, womp. Womp, 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 womp. Womp, 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 womp. Womp, 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 womp. Charlie Brown, what you doing on that? Womp, 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 womp. You turn your homework in, Charlie Brown? Womp, 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 womp. That's all you hear. Because everything else the word says is foolishness mm -hmm. to you. Because yeah. you're not ready for it. Right. Listen, some people not ready for the resurrection. Right. That's why they haven't walked in the resurrection power. And the ability to operate in the authority that the resurrection gave us when he got up. Don't you know that you didn't wake yourself up today? Amen. Your alarm clock didn't wake you up today. It was the resurrection power of Jesus Christ from over 2,000 years ago that caused us to have life in our body today. Yes. To resurrect us this morning. In the newness of what we were. When we are dead in our sins, we have to be resurrected and we have to 
let that old man be crucified. And we have to let our new man come back to life. And when that new man comes back to life, he comes back to life in his soul. And he comes back to life in his spirit. And he comes back to life to produce seeds that are going to produce the very nature and character of Christ. Well, uh -huh. Romans 4 and 25 says, he was handed over to die because of the, our sins. And he was raised up to life to make everything right with yeah. God. Good God of mine. He decided that he would die for us. Who, 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 who amongst you is willing to lay down their life for their freedom? Mm -hmm. Huh? Okay. I'm going to leave it right there. Yeah. Watch this. When we are brand new and when we've been forgiven, that means forgiven and brand new means that the Lord has dealt with it. He's put it as far as it is from the east to the west. He's thrown it into the sea of forgiveness. Psalm 108 said, God throws our sins as far as the east is from the west. Mm -hmm. God then dealt with it. Mm -hmm. He's handled it on our behalf. The problem is, is we haven't dealt with it. Mm -hmm. And we're still trying to hold on to what he didn't dealt with. Mm -hmm. We're trying to hold on to something that's dead because we don't want it dead. Amen. The Lord is trying to resurrect us into newness. And we tried to hold on to a dead part of us. Well. Huh? That's why we can't walk in the resurrection power. That's why we don't have the authority running through us like we want to. Because we want to hold on to our, we, we want to hold on to our old pride. Mm -hmm. We want to hold on to our old, our old way of thinking. Listen, yeah. I, listen I, we say it all the time. If your old man got you where he got you, how, how much further can your new man get you? All mm -hmm. right. Your old man got you. The only where he could get you to. Right. How much trouble did you get in in your old man? Well, we all remember. There's not a person under the sound of my voice, whether you're in a hospital room or whether you're in an operating room, that don't remember where you came from Amen. and what you did. Now, some people got that selective amnesia and like to forget. And like to forget and like to walk around here thinking more highly of themselves than they are and, 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 and like to think that they was always holy. Mm. Yeah, but 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 I got news for you. You wasn't always holy. Amen. Ain't no need in you telling me or anybody else that'll listen to that lie that you was always holy. You wasn't. I ain't never do that. You might not have never did that. But there was something that you did. Huh? Come on, talk to me. You might not have did that. You understand where I'm coming from? But there was something. No, I didn't do that. No. So listen, I want you that didn't do it. Give us your secret. Because if you didn't grow up to be a 40, 50, 60 year old man and you ain't done a whole lot, you was, you was either sheltered or in a bubble somewhere. <laughs> in a cave somewhere. All right. But if you done lived and you done lived in this world, you've been affected and touched by some of the trials and tribulations that's in this world. Yeah. The word of God said, ain't none of us that haven't sinned. Yeah, right. So I want you to stop telling me that lie. Sin has affected us all. I'm talking about what I'm talking about. Watch this. Because of what Jesus did in his resurrection power, he gave us might, power, and authority. He gave us a name that was above all names. Well, he gave us a gift of righteousness, a gift of life. He gave us a, a, the, the resurrection was a gift. Amen. The resurrection was a gift. The power that the resurrection presented and presents to us is a gift. The authority that the resurrection recognizes is a gift to us. First Peter says, all praise to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again mm -hmm. because God raised Jesus from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. Yeah, yeah. Well, but what are you expecting? Mm -hmm. What's your great expectation? Okay. If your great expectation is finances, then let your great expectation be finances. If your great expectation is health, let your great expectation be health. If your great expectation is favor, let your great expectation be favor. If your great expectation is life, let your great expectation be life. Listen, Jesus said he came that we might have life and we might have it more abundantly. Yes. So if your great expectation is abundance, let your great expectation be abundance. But you got to let your lips line up with the word and the word got to line up with your lips. Amen. All right. Amen. At one time, at one time, we had no hope. 
without God in this world, Ephesians 2 and 12. Then the God of hope filled us with all joy and peace because of our belief. Well, we got joy and peace because of our belief. Look at Romans 15 and 13. That's what it says. Hope is our desire joined with expectation. See, we have to have an expectancy that God is going to move on our behalf. On, we have to have an expectancy that God has the power and the ability to fix whatever is broken in our lives. Mm -hmm. People in hospital rooms this morning all over the land and country, I send a word of healing to you right now. Listen, mm -hmm. I send a word of healing to you right now. People that are laying on the bed of affliction, I send a word of healing to you right now. Mm -hmm. The word of God says we have the authority and the power to send the word. If you're broken, Jesus, fix it. Mm -hmm. If you're in pain, Jesus, remove the pain. If it be your will. I want your will to be done, not my will. See, we want to we want the benefit of the blessing, but we don't want the endurance and the pain to go through what we gotta do to get there. So listen, if you got a thorn in your flesh, his grace is sufficient. I'm not gonna pray that he remove your thorn. And I don't want you to pray that he remove mine. His grace is sufficient, amen. See, church, I'm closing. I'm just here today to remind you of the resurrection of Christ. I'm, re I'm here to remind you of the eternal power that is placed in our hearts and minds and the unspeakable joy and the glory and the hope that the resurrection brings. If God can raise Jesus from the dead, then there is nothing that he cannot do. Amen. That's right. If God can raise Jesus from the dead, mm -hmm. there is nothing that he cannot do. Right. You've got to believe that. And when you believe it, you activate that resurrection yeah. power. All right. Resurrection power is meaning that God's power is already in action. Mm -hmm. But we gotta let it, we gotta let it Elkasessa in us. <laughs> we gotta let the word Elkasessa in us. Y'all know what happened when the word Elkasessa in you know. You know what happened when you drop that Elkasessa in the water? And start fizzing. Start bubbling. Start breaking down some stuff. You start getting to a place where you can drink it. Because you put that exercise in your mouth without putting it in that water, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, tell me four minutes in your mouth. Yeah. Right. Malachi 4 and 2 says, But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise up with healing in his wings, and you will go free, leaping with joy like calves out to the pasture. The Word of God is a healer. The resurrection of power of God gives us the power of healing. I want you to look at this and then I'm going to close. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us his life when he raised Christ from the dead. It's only by his grace that we have been saved. For he raised us up from the dead along with Christ and is seated with us, with him, in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. The resurrection is the restoration of everything that Adam and Eve lost in the beginning. And this speaks of complete victory over every negative thing or negative action that we might face right now was addressed on the cross. Well, All of the preaching of the Bible, all of the words that we hear about the, the resurrection is only a reconciliation of what Jesus has already done. Mm -hmm. The resurrection shows that God intends for the world to be free from the power of death. Mm -hmm. The resurrection addresses our personal transformation that our lives will no longer be a life enslaved to sin. That, that we have triumphed over death through Christ. Mm -hmm. The resurrection is a weapon that we got to learn how to use. We have to learn how to use the resurrection as a weapon. Mm -hmm. And how you weaponize the resurrection is, is you understand the power. Know that God's promise speaks to our personal situation. We gotta know that God's power speaks to our ultimate transformation. We gotta know that God is teaching us healing through His well, Word. Well, we gotta well. know that God is in every man, but every man is not in God. Amen. We gotta know that even though that He was buried in that tomb, that He arose on that third day, just like the Word said. I'm just trying to tell you, we can no longer walk unchanged. We can no longer walk like we used to walk because the power of the resurrection demands that we come out of our tomb. Well, we need to come out of our tomb of, of hurt. We need to come out of our tomb of sadness and our tomb of pain and our tomb of selfishness and our tomb of anger and our tomb of pride and our tomb of lack and our tombs of ignorance 
and, or, uh, or whatever struggle that caused us to be in tune, we need to come out yes, yes. and let it be resurrected. Yes. With the mouth, confession yes. is made unto salvation. The most important thing that we can remember is that our lips has got to line up with the word of God. Amen. And our life has got to line up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. I want to leave you with this final thought before I close. The world's version of Easter is absolutely meaningless to believers well, who understand well, well, well. the resurrection power Amen. and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and for those that confess him as Lord. That's what today is all about. I challenge every person who has ever grew up saying Easter. Don't let it roll off your lips no more. Learn. Train yourself. The old man said Easter. Let the new man say the resurrection. Because that's what it's all about. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the word that you have released into your people on this morning. Amen. We believe, Father Jesus. God, that you were fully man, God, yes, okay. and spirit. And that you died and were raised from the dead. Jesus. Father God, we believe that your spirit yes. is speaking to our hearts right now. Mm -hmm. We believe, Father God, that you are opening our hearts yes, towards you to receive full access yes, to the resurrection power. Mm -hmm. Father God, today we come to you and we confess all of those ignorant, foolish things we've ever said or done. We ask you, Father God, to erase them and cover them in your blood. We know that you arose from the dead and that you entered into well, eternal life at that very moment in us. Mm -hmm. God, we ask you to hear us yes. and to allow us to continue to walk in our newness as we are reborn in you. Refresh our commitment to walk in yes, you. Lord. Give us the full power of the resurrection. Yes, we pray that your spirit will work on the hearts of those that are here and of those that are listening. God bless every precious life here. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Bless them, Lord. 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 According to your will, bless them as they need. Make it a great day, Lord. And bring these folks back from wherever they are. Bring them wherever they are. Bring them back from that it's if you're not there. Lord, restore our joy and our praise and our peace and our worship and our fellowship. Lord, we come around your table right now thanking you, thank you. for dying for us. We thank you, Father God, for dying for us, but we thank you even more for living in us. Father God, we thank you for all things right now, your glory, for your grace, for your providence, for your promise, for your power to resurrect. We thank you, Father God. And we give it in glory, honor, and praise. Yes, Lord. And all of the sound of my voice said, amen. 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 And amen. amen. On this resurrection, on this resurrection Sunday, I just want you to be reminded that right where you are, that God is able. If you trust God enough, if you believe God is able, you know that God is not a man that he should lie. His word will not return to him void. It will accomplish what he has sent it forth to do on your behalf. Hear these words. Hear these words and know that God is alive in you. Amen. amen. And amen. To send yourself dismissed from this portion of the service as we go on to the next phase of our service, get our offering, we'll get our announcements, and then we're going to go and enjoy the rest of the Resurrection Sunday. Amen. amen. amen.